In the twenty-third year of Joash, son of Ahuziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned seventeen years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord by following the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit, and he did not turn away from them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel, and for a long time he kept them under the power of Hazael, king of Aram, and Ben-Hadad, his son. Then Jehoahaz sought the Lord's favor, and the Lord listened to him, for he saw how severely the king of Aram was oppressing Israel. The Lord provided a deliverer for Israel, and they escaped from the power of Aram. So the Israelites lived in their own homes as they had before, but they did not turn away from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, which he had caused Israel to commit. They continued in them. Also, the Asherah pole remained standing in Samaria. Nothing had been left of the army of Jehoahaz except fifty horsemen, ten chariots, and ten thousand foot soldiers, for the king of Aram had destroyed the rest and made them like the dust at threshing time. As for the other events of the reign of Jehoahaz, all he did and his achievements, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jehoahaz rested with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria, and Jehoash, his son, succeeded him as king. In the thirty-seventh year of Joash, king of Judah, Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned sixteen years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and did not turn away from any of the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. He continued in them. As for the other events of the reign of Jehoash, all he did and his achievements, including his war against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jehoash rested with his ancestors, and Jeroboam succeeded him on the throne. Jehoash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now Elisha had been suffering from the illness from which he died. Jehoash, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him. My father! My father! He cried. The chariots and horsemen of Israel! Elisha said, Get a bow and some arrows. And he did so. Take the bow in your hands. He said to the king of Israel. When he had taken it, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window. He said, and he opened it. Shoot! Elisha said, and he shot. The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Aram. Elisha declared, You will completely destroy the Arameans at Aphek. Then he said, Take the arrows. And the king took them. Elisha told him, Strike the ground. He struck it three times and stopped. The man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely destroyed it. But now you will defeat it only three times. Elisha died and was buried. Now Moabite raiders used to enter the country every spring. Once, while some Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders, so they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bones, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. Hazel, king of Aram, oppressed Israel throughout the reign of Jehoahaz. But the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion and showed concern for them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To this day, he has been unwilling to destroy them or banish them from his presence. Hazel, king of Aram, died, and Ben-Hadad, his son, succeeded him as king. Then Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, recaptured from Ben-Hadad, 
son of Hazel, the towns he had taken in battle from his father, Jehoahaz. Three times Jehoash defeated him, and so he recovered the Israelite towns. In the second year of Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem twenty-nine years. His mother's name was Jehoadan. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father David had done. In everything he followed the example of his father Joash. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. After the kingdom was firmly in his grasp, he executed the officials who had murdered his father, the king. Yet he did not put the children of the assassins to death in accordance with what is written in the book of the law of Moses, where the Lord commanded, Parents are not to be put to death for their children nor children put to death for their parents. Each of you will die for their own sin. He was the one who defeated 10,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt and captured Selah in battle, calling it Jokthiel, the name it has to this day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, with the challenge. Come! Let us face each other in battle. But Jehoash, king of Israel, replied to Amaziah, king of Judah. A thistle in Lebanon sent a message to a cedar in Lebanon. Give your daughter to my son in marriage. Then a wild beast in Lebanon came along and trampled the thistle underfoot. You have indeed defeated Edom, and now you are arrogant. Glory in your victory, but stay at home. Why ask for trouble and cause your own downfall and that of Judah also? Amaziah, however, would not listen. So Jehoash, king of Israel, attacked. He and Amaziah, king of Judah, faced each other at Beth Shemesh in Judah. Judah was routed by Israel, and every man fled to his home. Jehoash, king of Israel, captured Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Ahaziah at Beth Shemesh. Then Jehoash went to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate, a section about 400 cubits long. He took all the gold and silver and all the articles found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace. He also took hostages and returned to Samaria. As for the other events of the reign of Jehoash, what he did and his achievements, including his war against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jehoash rested with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel, and Jeroboam, his son, succeeded him as king. Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, lived for fifteen years after the death of Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel. As for the other events of Amaziah's reign, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? They conspired against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, but they sent men after him to Lachish and killed him there. He was brought back by horse and was buried in Jerusalem with his ancestors in the city of David. Then all the people of Judah took Azariah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in place of his father Amaziah. He was the one who rebuilt Elith and restored it to Judah after Amaziah rested with his ancestors. In the 15th year of Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, king of Israel, became king in Samaria, and he reigned forty-one years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and did not turn away from any of the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. 
He was the one who restored the boundaries of Israel from Lebo Hamath to the Dead Sea in accordance with the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, spoken through his servant Jonah, son of Amittai, the prophet from gath Hefer. The Lord had seen how bitterly everyone in Israel, whether slave or free, was suffering. There was no one to help them. And since the Lord had not said he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash. As for the other events of Jeroboam's reign, all he did, and his military achievements, including how he recovered for Israel both Damascus and Hamath, which had belonged to Judah, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jeroboam rested with his ancestors, the kings of Israel, and Zechariah, his son, succeeded him as king. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jechaliah. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. The Lord afflicted the king with leprosy until the day he died, and he lived in a separate house. Jotham, the king's son, had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. As for the other events of Azariah's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Azariah rested with his ancestors and was buried near them in the city of David, and Jotham his son succeeded him as king. In the 38th year of Azariah king of Judah, Zechariah son of Jeroboam became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned six months. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as his predecessors had done. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. Shalom, son of Jabesh, conspired against Zechariah. He attacked him in front of the people, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Zechariah's reign are written in the book of the Annals of the Kings of Israel. So the word of the Lord spoken to Jehu was fulfilled. Your descendants will sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. Shalom, son of Jabesh, became king in the 39th year of Uzziah, king of Judah, and he reigned in Samaria one month. Then Minahim, son of Gadai, went from Tirzah up to Samaria. He attacked Shalom, son of Jabesh, in Samaria, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Shalom's reign and the conspiracy he led are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. At that time, Minahim, starting out from Tirzah, attacked Tifsa and everyone in the city and its vicinity because they refused to open their gates. He sacked Tifsa and ripped open all the pregnant women. In the 39th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Minahim, son of Gadai, became king of Israel, and he reigned in Samaria ten years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. During his entire reign, he did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. Then Pul, king of Assyria, invaded the land, and Menahim gave him a thousand talents of silver to gain his support and strengthen his own hold on the kingdom. Menahim exacted this money from Israel. Every wealthy person had to contribute 50 shekels of silver to be given to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria withdrew and stayed in the land no longer. As for the other events of Menahim's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel?
Menahem rested with his ancestors, and Pekahiah his son succeeded him as king. In the fiftieth year of Azariah king of Judah, Pekahiah son of Menahem became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned two years. Pekahiah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. One of his chief officers, Pekah, son of Remaliah, conspired against him. Taking fifty men of Gilead with him, he assassinated Pekahiah along with Argob and Aria in the citadel of the royal palace at Samaria. So Pekah killed Pekahiah and succeeded him as king. The other events of Pekahiah's reign and all he did are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. In the fifty-second year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, son of Remaliah, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned twenty years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. In the time of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, came and took Ijen, abel beth Genoa, Kedish, and Hazar. He took Gilead and Galilee, including all the land of Naphtali, and deported the people to Assyria. Then Hoshea, son of Elah, conspired against Pekah, son of Remaliah. He attacked and assassinated him, and then succeeded him as king in the twentieth year of Jotham, son of Uzziah. As for the other events of Pekah's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? In the second year of Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was twenty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem sixteen years. His mother's name was Jerusha, daughter of Zadok. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Uzziah had done. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord. As for the other events of Jotham's reign, and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? In those days, the Lord began to send Reason, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, against Judah. Jotham rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David, the city of his father, and Ahaz, his son, succeeded him as king. In the seventeenth year of Pekah, son of Remaliah, Ahaz, son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem sixteen years. Unlike David, his father, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord, his God. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel and even sacrificed his son in the fire engaging in the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense at the high places, on the hilltops and under every spreading tree. Then Reason, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem and besieged Ahaz, but they could not overpower him. At that time, Reason, king of Aram, recovered Elath for Aram by driving out the people of Judah. Edomites then moved into Elath and have lived there to this day. Ahaz sent messengers to say to Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, I am your servant and vassal. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Aram and of the king of Israel who are attacking me. 
And Ahaz took the silver and gold found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace and sent it as a gift to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria complied by attacking Damascus and capturing it. He deported its inhabitants to Kir and put reason to death. Then King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria. He saw an altar in Damascus and sent to Uriah the priest a sketch of the altar with detailed plans for its construction. So Uriah the priest built an altar in accordance with all the plans that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus and finished it before King Ahaz returned. When the king came back from Damascus and saw the altar, he approached it and presented offerings on it. He offered up his burnt offering and grain offering, poured out his drink offering, and splashed the blood of his fellowship offerings against the altar. As for the bronze altar that stood before the Lord, he brought from the front of the temple, from between the new altar and the temple of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the new altar. King Ahaz then gave these orders to Uriah the priest. On a large new altar, offer the morning burnt offering and the evening grain offering, the king's burnt offering and his grain offering, and the burnt offering of all the people of the land, and their grain offering and their drink offering. Splash against this altar the blood of all the burnt offerings and sacrifices, but I will use the bronze altar for seeking guidance. And Uriah the priest did just as King Ahaz had ordered. King Ahaz cut off the side panels and removed the basins from the movable stands. He removed the seed from the bronze bulls that supported it and set it on a stone base. He took away the Sabbath canopy that had been built at the temple and removed the royal entryway outside the temple of the Lord in deference to the king of Assyria. As for the other events of the reign of Ahaz and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Ahaz rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David, and Hezekiah his son succeeded him as king. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, Hoshea son of Elah became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned nine years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not like the kings of Israel who preceded him. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up to attack Hoshea, who had been Shalmaneser's vassal and had paid him tribute. But the king of Assyria discovered that Hoshea was a traitor, for he had sent envoys to Saul, king of Egypt, and he no longer paid tribute to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore Shalmaneser seized him and put him in prison. The king of Assyria invaded the entire land, marched against Samaria, and laid siege to it for three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and deported the Israelites to Assyria. He settled them in Hala in Gozen, on the harbor river, and in the towns of the Medes. All this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of Egypt from under the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They worshipped other gods and followed the practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before them, as well as the practices that the kings of Israel had introduced. The Israelites secretly did things against the Lord their God that were not right, from watchtower to fortified city, they built themselves high places in all their towns. They set up sacred stones and Asherah poles on every high hill and under every spreading tree. At every high place they burned incense, as the nations whom the Lord had driven out before them had done. They did wicked things that aroused the Lord's anger. They worshipped idols, though the Lord had said, you shall not do this. The Lord warned Israel and Judah through all his prophets and seers. Turn from your evil ways. Observe my commands and decrees. 
in accordance with the entire law that I commanded your ancestors to obey, and that I delivered to you through my servants, the prophets. But they would not listen, and were as stiff-necked as their ancestors, who did not trust in the Lord their God. They rejected his decrees and the covenant he had made with their ancestors, and the statutes he had warned them to keep. They followed worthless idols, and themselves became worthless. They imitated the nations around them, although the Lord had ordered them. Do not do as they do. They forsook all the commands of the Lord their God, and made for themselves two idols cast in the shape of calves and an Ushira pole. They bowed down to all the starry hosts, and they worshipped Baal. They sacrificed their sons and daughters in the fire. They practiced divination and sought omens and sold themselves to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. So the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his presence. Only the tribe of Judah was left, and even Judah did not keep the commands of the Lord their God. They followed the practices Israel had introduced. Therefore the Lord rejected all the people of Israel. He afflicted them and gave them into the hands of plunderers until he thrust them from his presence. When he tore Israel away from the house of David, they made Jeroboam son of Nebat their king. Jeroboam enticed Israel away from following the Lord and caused them to commit a great sin. The Israelites persisted in all the sins of Jeroboam and did not turn away from them until the Lord removed them from his presence, as he had worn through all his servants, the prophets. So the people of Israel were taken from their homeland into exile in Assyria, and they are still there. The king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, and Sepharvaim, and settled them in the towns of Samaria to replace the Israelites. They took over Samaria and lived in its towns. When they first lived there, they did not worship the Lord. So he sent lions among them, and they killed some of the people. It was reported to the king of Assyria. My lord, the people you deported and resettled in the towns of Samaria do not know what the God of that country requires. He has sent lions among them, which are killing them off, because the people do not know what he requires. Then the king of Assyria gave this order. Have one of the priests who took captive from Samaria go back to live there and teach the people what the God of the land requires. So one of the priests who had been exiled from Samaria came to live in Bethel and taught them how to worship the Lord. Nevertheless, each national group made its own gods in the several towns where they settled and set them up in the shrines the people of Samaria had made at the high places. The people from Babylon made Sukkot Beneth, those from Kutha made Nergo, and those from Hamath made Oshima. The Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sephirvites burned their children in the fire as sacrifices to Adramalek and Anamalek, the gods of Sepharvaim. They worshipped the Lord, but they also appointed all sorts of their own people to officiate for them as priests in the shrines at the high places. They worshipped the Lord, but they also served their own gods in accordance with the customs of the nations from which they had been brought. To this day, they persist in their former practices. They neither worship the Lord nor adhere to the decrees and regulations, the laws and commands that the Lord gave the descendants of Jacob, whom he named Israel. When the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites, he commanded them, Do not worship any other gods or bow down to them. Serve them or sacrifice to them. But the Lord, who brought you up out of Egypt, with mighty power, and outstretched arm is the one you must worship. To him you shall bow down, and to him offer sacrifices. 
You must always be careful to keep the decrees and regulations, the laws and commands he wrote for you. Do not worship other gods. Do not forget the covenant I have made with you. And do not worship other gods. Rather, worship the Lord your God. It is he who will deliver you from the hand of all your enemies. They would not listen, however, but persisted in their former practices. Even while these people were worshiping the Lord, they were serving their idols. To this day, their children and grandchildren continue to do as their ancestors did. In the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. He removed the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had made, for up to that time the Israelites had been burning incense to it. It was called Nehushtan. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. He held fast to the Lord and did not stop following him. He kept the commands the Lord had given Moses. And the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he undertook. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. From watchtower to fortified city, he defeated the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory. In King Hezekiah's fourth year, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, marched against Sumeria and laid siege to it. At the end of three years, the Assyrians took it, so Samaria was captured in Hezekiah's sixth year, which was the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel. The king of Assyria deported Israel to Assyria and settled them in Hala, in Gozen, on the harbor river, and in towns of the Medes. This happened because they had not obeyed the Lord their God, but had violated his covenant, all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded. They neither listened to the commands, nor carried them out. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. So Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent this message to the king of Assyria at Lachish. I have done wrong. Withdraw from me, and I will pay whatever you demand of me. The king of Assyria exacted from Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. So Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace. At this time, Hezekiah, king of Judah, stripped off the gold with which he had covered the doors and doorposts of the temple of the Lord and gave it to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria sent his supreme commander his chief officer and his field commander with a large army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. They came up to Jerusalem and stopped at the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the washerman's field. They called for the king and Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder, went out to them. The field commander said to them, Tell Hezekiah, this is what the great king, the king of Assyria, says. On what are you basing this confidence of yours? You say you have the counsel and the might for war, but you speak only empty words. On whom are you depending that you rebel against me? Look, I know you are depending on Egypt, 
that splintered reed of a staff, which pierces the hand of anyone who leans on it. Such is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who depend on him. But if you say to me, we are depending on the Lord our God, isn't he the one whose high places and altars Hezekiah removed, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, you must worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Come now, make a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses, if you can put riders on them. How can you repulse one officer of the least of my master's officials, even though you are depending on Egypt for chariots and horsemen? Furthermore, have I come to attack and destroy this place without word from the Lord? The Lord himself told me to march against this country and destroy it. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, and Shebna, and Joah said to the field commander, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, since we understand it. Don't speak to us in Hebrew in the hearing of the people on the wall. But the commander replied, was it only to your master and you that my master sent me to say these things and not to the people sitting on the wall? Who, like you, will have to eat their own excrement and drink their own urine? Then the commander stood and called out in Hebrew, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. This is what the king says. Do not let Hezekiah deceive you. He cannot deliver you from my hand. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord when he says, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah. This is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and come out to me. Then each of you will eat fruit from your own vine and fig tree and drink water from your own cistern until I come and take you to a land like your own, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive trees and honey. Choose life and not death. Do not listen to Hezekiah. For he is misleading you when he says, The Lord will deliver us. Has the God of any nation ever delivered his land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim, Henna, and Eva? Have they rescued Samaria from my hand? Who of all the gods of these countries has been able to save his land from me? How then can the Lord deliver Jerusalem from my hand? But the people remained silent and said nothing in reply, because the king had commanded, Do not answer him. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder, went to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him what the field commander had said. When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple of the Lord. He sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna the secretary, and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. They told him, This is what Hezekiah says. This day is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace. As when children come to the moment of birth and there is no strength to deliver them. It may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of the field commander, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God, and that he will rebuke him for the words the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, pray for the remnant that still survives. When King Hezekiah's officials came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Tell your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard. Those words with which the underlings of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me? Listen, when he hears a certain report, I will make him want to return to his own country, and there I will have him cut down with the sword. When the field commander heard that the king of Assyria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting against Libna. Now Sennacherib received a report that Terhaka, 
the king of Cush was marching out to fight against him. So he again sent messengers to Hezekiah with this word. Say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God you depend on deceive you when he says, Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Surely you've heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely. And will you be delivered? Did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozan, Haran, Rezeph, and the people of Eden who were in Telassar. Where is the king of Hamath? Where the king of Arpath? Where are the kings of Lair, Sepharvaim, Hena, and Eva? Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to the words Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the living God. It is true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste these nations and their lands. They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them, for they were not gods but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. Now, Lord, our God, deliver us from his hand so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent a message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I have heard your prayer concerning Sennacherib, king of Assyria. This is the word that the Lord has spoken against him. Virgin daughter Zion despises you and mocks you. Daughter Jerusalem tosses her head as you flee. Who is it you have ridiculed and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted your eyes in pride? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have ridiculed the Lord. And you have said, with my many chariots, I have ascended the heights of the mountains, the utmost heights of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars, the choicest of its junipers. I have reached its remotest parts, the finest of its forest. I have dug wells in foreign lands and drunk the water there with the soles of my feet. I have dried up all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard? Long ago I ordained it. In days of old I planned it. Now I have brought it to pass. That you have turned fortified cities into piles of stone. Their people, drained of power, are dismayed and put to shame. They are like plants in the field, like tender green shoots, like grass sprouting on the roof, scorched before it grows up. I know where you are, and when you come and go, and how you rage against me. Because you rage against me, and because your insolence has reached my ears, I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth, and I will make you return by the way you came. This will be the sign for you, Hezekiah. This year, you will eat what grows by itself and the second year what springs from that. But in the third year, sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Once more, a remnant of the kingdom of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. For out of Jerusalem will come a remnant, and out of Mount Zion, a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city or shoot an arrow here. He will not come before it with shield or build a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, he will return. He will not enter this city, declares the Lord, 
I will defend this city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David, my servant. That night, the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. One day, while he was worshipping in the temple of his god, Nisroch, his sons, Adremelech and Sherezer, killed him with the sword, and they escaped to the land of Ararat. And Esarhaddon, his son, succeeded him as king. In those days Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Then Isaiah said, Prepare a poultice of figs. They did so and applied it to the boil, and he recovered. Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, What will be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I will go up to the temple of the Lord on the third day from now? Isaiah answered, This is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps? Or shall it go back ten steps? It is a simple matter for the shadow to go forward ten steps, said Hezekiah. Rather, have it go back ten steps. Then the prophet Isaiah called on the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back the ten steps it had gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. At that time, Marduk Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon sent Hezekiah letters and a gift because he had heard of Hezekiah's illness. Hezekiah received the envoys and showed them all that was in his storehouses, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the fine olive oil, his armory and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, What did those men say? And where did they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied. They came from Babylon. The prophet asked, What did they see in your palace? <laughs> they saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your predecessors have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you, will be taken away and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. The word of the Lord you have spoken is good, Hezekiah replied, for he thought, Will there not be peace? And security in my lifetime. As for the other events of Hezekiah's reign, all his achievements, and how he made the pool and the tunnel by which he brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? 
Hezekiah rested with his ancestors, and Manasseh, his son, succeeded him as king. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. His mother's name was Hephzibah. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He rebuilt the high places his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He also erected altars to Baal and made an Asherah pole as Ahab king of Israel had done. He bowed down to all the starry hosts and worshipped them. He built altars in the temple of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem I will put my name. In the two courts of the temple of the Lord, he built altars to all the starry hosts. He sacrificed his own son in the fire, practiced divination, sought omens, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. He took the carved Asherah pole he had made and put it in the temple, of which the Lord had said to David and to his son Solomon, In this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not again make the feet of the Israelites wander from the land I gave their ancestors, if only they will be careful to do everything I commanded them, and will keep the whole law that my servant Moses gave them. But the people did not listen. Manasseh led them astray, so that they did more evil than the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. The Lord said through his servants, the prophets, Manasseh, king of Judah, has committed these detestable sins. He has done more evil than the Amorites who preceded him, and has led Judah into sin with his idols. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I am going to bring such disaster on Jerusalem and Judah, that the ears of everyone who hears of it will tingle. I will stretch out over Jerusalem the measuring line used against Samaria, and the plumb line used against the house of Ahab. I will wipe out Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance and give them into the hands of enemies. They will be looted and plundered by all their enemies. They have done evil in my eyes and have aroused my anger from the day their ancestors came out of Egypt until this day. Moreover, Manasseh also shed so much innocent blood that he filled Jerusalem from end to end besides the sin that he had caused Judah to commit, so that they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. As for the other events of Manasseh's reign and all he did, including the sin he committed, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Manasseh rested with his ancestors and was buried in his palace garden, the garden of Uzzah. And Ammon, his son, succeeded him as king. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem two years. His mother's name was Meshulameth, daughter of Haraz, she was from Jopra. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord as his father Manasseh had done. He followed completely the ways of his father, worshipping the idols his father had worshipped and bowing down to them. He forsook the Lord, the God of his ancestors, and did not walk in obedience to him. Ammon's officials conspired against him and assassinated the king in his palace. Then the people of the land killed all who had plotted against King Ammon, and they made Josiah, his son, king in his place. As for the other events of Ammon's reign, and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? He was buried in his tomb in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah, his son, succeeded him as king. 
Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. His mother's name was Jedidah, daughter of Adaya. She was from Bozkath. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and followed completely the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the eighteenth year of his reign, King Josiah sent the secretary, Shaphan, son of Azaliah, the son of Meshullam, to the temple of the Lord. He said, Go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, and have him get ready the money that has been brought into the temple of the Lord which the doorkeepers have collected from the people. Have them entrusted to the men appointed to supervise the work on the temple. And have these men pay the workers who repair the temple of the Lord, the carpenters, the builders, and the masons. Also, have them purchase timber and dress stone to repair the temple. But they need not account for the money entrusted to them because they are honest in their dealings. Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan who read it. Then Shaphan the secretary My went Lord. to the king and reported to him, Your officials have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Then Shaphan the secretary informed the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, son of Shaphan, Achbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the secretary, and Isaiah, the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us, because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, Achbor, Shaphan, and Isaiah went to speak to the prophet Huldah, who was the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, the son of Harhaz, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the new quarter. She said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Tell the man who sent you to me, this is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people, according to everything written in the book the king of Judah has read. Because they have forsaken me, and burned incense to other gods, and aroused my anger by all the idols their hands have made, my anger will burn against this place, and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart was responsive, and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I have spoken against this place and its people, that they would become a curse and be laid waste. And because you tore your robes and wept in my presence, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your ancestors and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I am going to bring on this place. So they took her answer back to the king. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests, and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing all the words of the Book of the Covenant which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord. To follow the Lord and keep his commands, statutes, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul, thus confirming the words of the covenant written in this book. Then all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. The king ordered Hilkiah the high priest, 
the priests next in rank and the doorkeepers to remove from the temple of the Lord all the articles made for Baal and Asherah and all the starry hosts. He burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron Valley and took the ashes to Bethel. He did away with the idolatrous priests appointed by the kings of Judah to burn incense on the high places of the towns of Judah and on those around Jerusalem. Those who burned incense to Baal, to the sun and moon, to the constellations and to all the starry hosts. He took the Asherah pole from the temple of the Lord to the Kidron Valley outside Jerusalem and burned it there. He ground it to powder and scattered the dust over the graves of the common people. He also tore down the quarters of the male shrine prostitutes that were in the temple of the Lord, the quarters where women did weaving for Usherah. Josiah brought all the priests from the towns of Judah and desecrated the high places from Geba to Beersheba, where the priests had burned incense. He broke down the gateway at the entrance of the gate of Joshua, the city governor, which was on the left of the city gate. Although the priests of the high places did not serve at the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, they ate unleavened bread with their fellow priests. He desecrated Tophet, which was in the valley of ben Hinnom, so no one could use it to sacrifice their son or daughter in the fire to Molech. He removed from the entrance to the temple of the Lord the horses that the king of Judah had dedicated to the sun. They were in the court near the room of an official named Nathan Mealy. Josiah then burned the chariots dedicated to the sun. He pulled down the altars the kings of Judah had erected on the roof near the upper room of Ahaz and the altars Manasseh had built in the two courts of the temple of the Lord. He removed them from there smashed them to pieces and threw the rubble into the Kidron Valley. The king also desecrated the high places that were east of Jerusalem on the south of the hill of corruption, the one Solomon, king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth, the vile goddess of the Sidonians, for Chemosh, the vile god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the people of Ammon. Josiah smashed the sacred stones and cut down the Asherah poles and covered the sites with human bones, even the altar at Bethel, the high place made by Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had caused Israel to sin. Even that altar and high place he demolished. He burned the high place and ground it to powder and burned the Asherah pole also. Then Josiah looked around and when he saw the tombs that were there on the hillside, he had the bones removed from them and burned on the altar to defile it. In accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by the man of God who foretold these things, the king asked, What is that tombstone I see? The people of the city said, It marks the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah and pronounced against the altar of Bethel the very things you have done to it. Leave it alone, he said. Don't let anyone disturb his bones. So they spared his bones and those of the prophet who had come from Samaria. Bring them to the altar. Just as he had done at Bethel, Josiah removed all the shrines at the high places that the kings of Israel had built in the towns of Samaria and that had aroused the Lord's anger. Josiah slaughtered all the priests of those high places on the altars and burned human bones on them. Then. He went back to Jerusalem. The king gave this order to all the people. Celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God, as it is written in this book of the covenant. Neither in the days of the judges who led Israel, nor in the days of the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah had any such Passover been observed. But in the 18th year of King Josiah, this Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem. Furthermore, Josiah got rid of the mediums and spiritists, the household gods, the idols, and all the other detestable things seen in Judah and Jerusalem. This he did to fulfill the requirements of the law, written in the book that Hilkiah the priest had discovered in the temple of the Lord. 
Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength, in accordance with all the law of Moses. Nevertheless, the Lord did not turn away from the heat of his fierce anger, which burned against Judah because of all that Manasseh had done to arouse his anger. So the Lord said, I will remove Judah also from my presence, as I removed Israel. And I will reject Jerusalem, the city I chose, and this temple, about which I said, My name shall be there. As for the other events of Josiah's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? While Josiah was king, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up to the Euphrates River to help the king of Assyria. King Josiah marched out to meet him in battle, but Necho faced him and killed him at Megiddo. Josiah's servants brought his body in a chariot from Megiddo to Jerusalem and buried him in his own tomb. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz, son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in place of his father. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Hamutal, daughter of Jeremiah. She was from Libna. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his predecessors had done. Pharaoh Necho put him in chains at Ribla in the land of Hamath, so that he might not reign in Jerusalem. And he imposed on Judah a levy of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, son of Josiah, king in place of his father, Josiah and changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim. But he took Jehoahaz and carried him off to Egypt, and there he died. Jehoiakim paid Pharaoh Necho the silver and gold he demanded. In order to do so, he taxed the land and exacted the silver and gold from the people of the land according to their assessments. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem eleven years. His mother's name was Zabida, daughter of Pidea. She was from Ruma. And he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his predecessors had done. During Jehoiakim's reign, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded the land, and Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years. But then he turned against Nebuchadnezzar and rebelled. The Lord sent Babylonian, Aramean, Moabite, and Ammonite raiders against him to destroy Judah in accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by his servants, the prophets. Surely these things happened to Judah according to the Lord's command in order to remove them from his presence because of the sins of Manasseh and all he had done including the shedding of innocent blood. For he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord was not willing to forgive. As for the other events of Jehoiakim's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Jehoiakim rested with his ancestors, and Jehoiakim, his son, succeeded him as king. The king of Egypt did not march out from his own country again, because the king of Babylon had taken all his territory from the Wadi of Egypt to the Euphrates River. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of El Nathan. She was from Jerusalem. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father had done. At that time, the officers of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, advanced on Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And Nebuchadnezzar himself came up to the city while his officers were besieging it. Jehoiakim, king of Judah, his mother, his attendants, his nobles, and his officials all surrendered to him. 
In the eighth year of the reign of the king of Babylon, he took Jehoiakim prisoner. As the Lord had declared, Nebuchadnezzar removed the treasures from the temple of the Lord and from the royal palace and cut up the gold articles that Solomon, king of Israel, had made for the temple of the Lord. He carried all Jerusalem into exile, all the officers and fighting men, and all the skilled workers and artisans, a total of 10,000. Only the poorest people of the land were left. Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiakim captive to Babylon. He also took from Jerusalem to Babylon the king's mother, his wives, his officials, and the prominent people of the land. The king of Babylon also deported to Babylon the entire force of 7,000 fighting men, strong and fit for war, and a thousand skilled workers and artisans. He made Mataniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in his place, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother's name was Hamutal, daughter of Jeremiah. She was from Libna. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as Jehoiakim had done. It was because of the Lord's anger that all this happened to Jerusalem and Judah, and in the end, he thrust them from his presence. Now Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So in the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched against Jerusalem with his whole army. He encamped outside the city and built siege works all around it. The city was kept under siege until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine in the city had become so severe that there was no food for the people to eat. Then the city wall was broken through, and the whole army fled at night through the gate between the two walls near the king's garden, though the Babylonians were surrounding the city. They fled toward the Arabah, but the Babylonian army pursued the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho. All his soldiers were separated from him and scattered, and he was captured. He was taken to the king of Babylon at Ribla, where sentence was pronounced on him. They killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. Then they put out his eyes, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. On the seventh day of the fifth month, in the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, commander of the Imperial Guard, an official of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burned down. The whole Babylonian army under the commander of the Imperial Guard broke down the walls around Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, the commander of the guard, carried into exile the people who remained in the city, along with the rest of the populace and those who had deserted to the king of Babylon. But the commander left behind some of the poorest people of the land to work the vineyards and fields. The Babylonians broke up the bronze pillars, the movable stands, and the bronze sea that were at the temple of the Lord, and they carried the bronze to Babylon. They also took away the pots, shovels, wick trimmers, dishes, and all the bronze articles used in the temple service. The commander of the Imperial Guard took away the censers and sprinkling bowls, all that were made of pure gold or silver. The bronze from the two pillars, the sea, and the movable stands, which Solomon had made for the temple of the Lord, was more than could be weighed. Each pillar was 18 cubits high. The bronze capital on top of one pillar was three cubits high and was decorated with a network and pomegranates of bronze all around. The other pillar with its network was similar. The commander of the guard took as prisoners Sarea, the chief priest, Zephaniah, the priest next in rank, and the three doorkeepers. 
Of those still in the city, he took the officer in charge of the fighting men and five royal advisors. He also took the secretary, who was chief officer in charge of conscripting the people of the land, and 60 of the conscripts were found in the city. Nebuzaradan, the commander, took them all and brought them to the king of Babylon at Ribla. There at Ribla, in the land of Haman, the king had them executed. So Judah went into captivity away from her land. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, appointed Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, to be over the people he had left behind in Judah. When all the army officers and their men heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah as governor, they came to Gedaliah at Mizpah. Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, Johanan, son of Korea, Sareah, son of Tanhumith, the Netophathite, Jeazaniah, the son of the Meukathite, and their men. Gedaliah took an oath to reassure them and their men. Do not be afraid of the Babylonian officials, he said. Settle down in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it will go well with you. In the seventh month, however, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishima, who was of royal blood, came with ten men and assassinated Gedaliah, and also the men of Judah, and the Babylonians who were with him at Mizpah. At this, all the people from the least to the greatest, together with the army officers, fled to Egypt for fear of the Babylonians. In the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the year Ewil Marduk became king of Babylon, he released Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from prison. He did this on the 27th day of the 12th month. He spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat of honor higher than those of the other kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim put aside his prison clothes and for the rest of his life ate regularly at the king's table. Day by day, the king gave Jehoiakim a regular allowance as long as he lived.